Hello, Chris Betcher here with some tips on working with fonts in Google Slides, although this obviously applies to Google Docs and some other different Google apps as well. The first thing is choosing fonts, and I guess this is one that most people know. If you have some text on a page, you can select that text and go up here to the font drop down list, and you have a whole bunch of fonts to pick from. So if I change it to say Georgia, or I change it to say uh, Courier New, whichever font you like, you can just change it from that drop down list. The second point is choosing the font weight. Just select that there. You can either have the normal font or you can click the bold button to make it heavier. And they've been the only two choices you've got. Now with certain fonts or typefaces, you can now go to that list and where you see the little arrow, you have a choice of everywhere from thin all the way up to black. From thin, which looks like that, all the way up to uh, bold or black, which looks like that. So you get a lot more choices with some fonts. The next option you have is in selecting new fonts. Now, when you go to that font list, if I just go and choose a, the text again and go to this font list, you might notice that I have a certain number of fonts in this list. And I can actually choose which fonts go into this list from hundreds that are available to me. You see if I go down here to more fonts, this dialog box opens up. On the left hand side, I have all the different possible web fonts that are available to me. And you can see if I scroll down through here, there's actually a lot there. When I get to the bottom of that list, it keeps scrolling and it keeps scrolling and it keeps scrolling. There's actually hundreds of these web fonts that I have available to me. On the right hand side are the fonts that I'm actually using. So let's say I decide that Indie Flower, for example, is not one I need anymore. I can just simply remove it and it goes away from my list. If I find another font that I like the look of, like say Shrick Hand, I simply click it and now Shrick Hand becomes available to me there in my list. When I say OK, now when I go to my font list, I have all these different fonts available to me, including Shrick Hand, which is the one I just added there. So you can actually customize this list to have whatever fonts you wish. The next thing is adding text boxes. These blocks here are in fact text boxes, and this is because I'm in Google Slides at the moment. Google Docs doesn't support text boxes yet, but Google Slides does. The way you do that is you select this text box icon at the top here, come down here, draw a box, and then simply click inside it and type your text. I'll just paste in some stuff I've got there, and that's how you can do that. Those text boxes, you can move around the screen, just like so. Something to be aware of that unlike a shape, which if you want to move a shape, you click in the middle and drag it. Of course, this shape is full of text. So if I click in the middle of a shape, it assumes I want to edit the text. So to move a text box, you've got to grab it by the edge. And you'll notice when you put your mouse right on the edge there, you get the four headed arrow and that's what lets you move the box around. You can't do it from inside the box because it thinks you're trying to work with the text. Working with text boxes, there are actually some text boxes on this page. If I go to the text box tool and draw a text box and start typing in it, that's fine. Let me just delete that. The trouble is, if I want to set a page up in advance and have some text boxes in it, if I just select everything on this page, you'll see there are in fact, oops, sorry, there are in fact four text boxes on this page, but they don't have anything in them yet, which is why they're blank. Trouble is when they're not selected, I don't see anything at all. So one little tip for working with text boxes is to just draw the text boxes where you want them, then come up here to the outline tool and give them a small border of say one pixel so you can see them. Now you can add your text and do whatever you want with them. And when you're done, then you simply select them again and turn that border back to transparent and they're invisible again. Okay, it's just a temporary thing while you're working with the text boxes. It often makes it much easier to work with them. Changing the font size, I'm sure many of you realize that if you select a piece of text, from this drop down list here, you can have a whole range of sizes. Now, if I want this text to fill this box, I can experiment, I can go 24, well, that's not big enough. I can go 36, that's a bit bigger. If I go 96, well, that's too big. And so it's a little bit of a guessing game here to try and find the right size. And right now it looks like 36 is too small and 48 is too big. So I could actually type a number in there and take a guess. Let's try 40 and that works. Let's try 42 that works and so on. So changing font sizes you can do from this drop down box. However, it's good to know that you can also bump font sizes. And by that I mean if I select the text and on my keyboard, if I choose shift command and then the uh, keys are the left and right 
greater than, less than symbols. So it's the same key as the comma and the full stop on your keyboard. So hold down Shift Command, or if you're on Windows or a Chromebook, Shift Control, and then either the greater than or less than symbol. The greater than symbol will bump it up one point size at a time. Less than will bump it down one point size at a time. So now to make that text fit this box exactly, I can simply keep tapping the greater than symbol while holding down Control uh, or Shift or Command Shift and wait until it gets just the right size, one too many, and then go back and there it is, the perfect size for that box. And finally, when you're working with text, sometimes it's good to use this thing called lorem ipsum text. It's what typographers often use when they're working on page layouts, so they're not distracted by the actual content. It's just basically dummy text. If you'd like to work with some dummy text, there's a great website called the Lorem Ipsum Generator at generator.lorem-ipsum.info, and the website looks like this. And you can simply go up here into this section here, choose how many paragraphs or how many words you want, and say generate, and then it will generate this text, which you can then copy and go back to your work and draw a text box and paste. So there you go, some tips for working with fonts and text in Google Slides or Google Docs.